Hello everybody, Christian from Treasure Town here, and today we're going to be unboxing a $1,000 coins and currency grab bag from West Coast Varieties. Spencer is sending me a huge amount of material here, so I'm hoping that we can get back to the 1,000 sort of watermark. Um, so that would be the ideal, could be anything. I always learn so much when I go through his bags because they're often filled with rare coins, varieties, some silver, you know, you never know, maybe we've got some gold today, but I'm excited to see how it goes. Um, this is part of a switch over also where this bag is gonna be sent out. It's probably already been sent by the time that this video uploads, but to a purchaser, um, since I'm going back to college, I don't have the ability to carry a ton of inventory, so I've sold most of it off and you know, I'm gonna outsource the grab bags. But let's get into it, see how we do. I'm excited to see what happens. So by now I unbox the coins, we're about to get into it, but I just wanna say that this video is probably better instead of being like, here's the bag you'll receive, it's more of here's the types of the items you'll receive. So that way, in the case that this is either way under or way over, well, it doesn't mean that this is gonna be the bag, it's more the types of stuff. So um, maybe it'll be more, maybe it'll be less in your bag, but um, I'm just sort of showing you how I'm thinking about retail values and how he's doing it as well. So let's get into it. And let's cut this thing open and see what we get, hoping for that $1,000 target. So at this point we have a nice mix. Looks like we have a bunch of, and it doesn't feel like it's all like 20 certified coins, but it, it feels like a good amount of certified coins jiggling around in there. And then this whole bag. So I think, I think we're gonna start with this stuff first and then we'll make our way over to the certified coins. But it'll be interesting to see how much, you know, values in this as compared to the uh, the graded coins. So hopefully we can make our way and like have some good results in this batch before we hit the uh, graded coins, but he also has to make some money too. So it's 1971. We have an Eisenhower uncirculated silver dollar, uh, and these were made for four years, 1971 and 1974. This one's 71S. Uh, there could be a peg leg, but that is not uh, the the peg leg variety um, and I'll just put it back inside but this is probably worth like ten dollars or twelve dollars somewhere in that range then looks like we have a little bit of error coinage some off-center errors this one from 1995 make sure that there's no double die on there and there's not uh, and then we have a 1970 something D and a 1990 uh, what, do, what do you think I think like 1999 P I think or 96 I want to say but Maybe I'll zoom in a little bit more. I want to say this is probably worth like somewhere 16 to $20 or so, um, but definitely a nice little group of coins. Then in a little bit of a different vein, it looks like we've got a Canadian half dollar. This should be, I don't know when Canada switched over from 80% silver uh, after they had been 92.5% the sterling. Uh, it could have been like 1920 was the year that Great Britain did it, but this one's like a solid silver coin, probably going to be worth in the $12 range, but nice way to have some variety because it is, you know, it's it's a overall world coin and currency bag here. Uh, this is super cool. So we've got an inverted mint mark and it's really, some of the inverted mint marks are tough to tell, but this one is a barber half dollar and the S is upside down. As you can see, it really should be, you know, that's how an S mint mark normally would be placed, but instead you have the small serif and it looks quite uh, lopsided at the bottom. So that's going to be a 1909. That's in decent shape, has solid eye appeal. So my guess is that's like 20 to 25 bucks, maybe a little bit more. And then here, let's see if it's got full bell lines. Probably not. Uh, it's going to be a 1955 Bugs Bunny. So you can see it's a die clash, I believe, where and it looks like an extra nostril or something, but the reverse would have clashed with it like the dies come together and then leave impressions on either uh, die. But in this case... The Franklin Half Dollar, you know, there's a ton of different Bugs Bunny Clash dies that are out there, and here's a nice example. Also, my guess is, if I remember correctly, in that $25 range, uh, we've got a few more of these, so let's see. So these are some Maryland, I think that these are like railroad rim, you could see, uh, yeah, like partial collars, but I don't know if they're a little bit more than a partial collar, because they start to be off-center, and like the... Rib is totally sort of messed up, but really neat. I think that these are worth, like, there's one from Maryland, one from South Carolina, probably in the range of, like, you know, seven bucks, six, eight bucks each, somewhere in that uh, area. And then over here, we've got some, let's see, 
some British stuff, uh, but then also an Indian head set, so I have no idea if there's some relation, but here uh, we've got a Great Britain 1918 Heaton, so that's like a mid-mark, and I think that that's a little bit better. I think the h mid petties are slightly more valuable, uh, so that's pretty nice. Then here, let's see, this looks like a 1937 half petty with the Sir Francis Drake, uh, you know, the his golden hind that sailed around. Uh, major navigational breakthroughs, and then we've got two Indian head sets. These actually look like they're in decent condition, so let's see. Uh, 1904, I'm trying to look. I don't think that there's any... I think there might be like a uh, repunch date where the four really extends north, but I don't see it there. But it's like a full Liberty coin, really nice. Probably like five bucks or so in value. Maybe it's a little higher. Uh, the similar situation, 1900 on this one. So, uh, interesting, very cool. This one's maybe a little bit more worn, but... Uh, another cool four coins to add to what we've found so far. Let's see. This one, continuing the Canadian theme, 1965. This will be 80% silver, and it's their silver dollar uh, that ran a little bit longer. I think it would have been cool if we had done the peace dollar through, you know, 1964 when he stopped using it. But I guess, you know, there were so many in the treasury vaults that it wasn't something we really needed. But Canada had continued or had dollars you know in the 60s so this is a nice example probably worth in the 30 buck range or so uh let's see this 1882 whoa i was actually literally this morning doing a video on the 1882 broken two coin uh let's see so you can see it and it could really be found in different conditions but the two was had a broken digit punched when it was punched and there were a lot of coins that got released, but that's actually a pretty nice coin. FS301, a really nice addition for whoever ends up getting this bag after I release it, you know, whatever first order comes in, but that's a great find. Uh, and then there's also this group. I want to see if there's, you know, I, I wasn't sure if I saw like a lamination error or something like that on one of these. Uh, so we've got the broken two. Let's see, what is this buffalo nickel? It is 1918, pretty nice, and there is a lamination running through that. Uh, here we have a little clipped planchet coin, uh, also 1882, but no broken two. That's very, very cool. Uh, minor clip, that's neat. Uh, this looks like a blank planchet, and it feels like the rim is formed somewhat, so uh, and it feels pretty old, so maybe it's a blank Indian headset. And then this one, let's see if there's anything clear. Ooh, it looks, I don't know exactly... What that is, maybe some sort of uh, like a broken die or something, or the planchet itself was flawed. Let's make sure, yeah, no estimate mark on the back, but uh, I'll have to follow up with Spencer to see what type of error this is. But a really nice group of mini errors. That's actually, you know, I think that that'll be worth a, a decent bit, like a nice clip planchet or lamination error on a Buffalo Nickel 19, like a 1918 that's in nice condition would be valuable. Whoa, this is extremely cool. I want to feel this because on I saw this earlier it said 1970 uh 1730 to 1733 Mexican eight reals 24.5 grams wow that is extremely cool and I have no idea I think that these are like cob coins you see the mo right there which I assume means Mexico City but I don't know if this is like th this could be worth a huge amount of money but maybe not I don't know if the not having a date part Maybe is why it's included in this, or maybe that's how we're going to be arriving at that $1,000, but this is extremely cool, and I don't know about it a ton to like give you all the information, but I'm going to try to edit some of that back in, just because I think that this one really stands out. So, wow. Really, really neat. Uh, super historic piece. That's That's great. Awesome. So, I feel like, I don't know, I don't know how that is going to be valued in the end, but uh, this one... I certainly know Australia $1, it's like a silver ounce, and it's a kookaburra from 1992, so I bet collector values, I bet this is has a nice premium over silver, it's in really nice shape still, I don't know if this is the mint packaging from the uh, Royal Australian Mint, but uh, still has that cool reverse proof design, and the kookaburra, one of the major silver coins in the world, uh, let's see, there's a few more coins here in this group, so... First up, 1990S, 1999S Close AM Proof. That is extremely cool. Let's see. Check that out. So they mixed up some of the dies because there's also some wide AM regular ones, but 
um, you know, business strike, but here the A and the M are touching on these proof sets. It should be, you know, it should not be that they are the close AM. It should be uh, wide AM. So if those A and M are touching, that's a great find. Uh, this one going to be worth, I don't know. I feel like they're worth like 50, 60 bucks, maybe even north of that. Uh, but I think that this one is one of the slightly better years for it. Over here, we have a nice uncirculated 1967, and then was going to check to make sure that there's nothing. It wasn't like a, because I think it's no date. Uh, there's an estimate, but I'm not sure what the date is. I can't tell if I can see like the outline of a nine or if that's just the silver there, but either way, it's probably like four bucks as a, or like three and a half dollars as a standing Liberty quarter. And then this one looks nice. We see an 1847 uh, large set. Oh, and there's something in back too. First, I want to check out the large scent. You know, it's got a few scratches, but prices on these have really been going up nicely. Probably worth, like, what, 15 bucks or so? Um, and then, let's see, over here, 1947 S over D, over mint mark. We'll see if the over mint mark shows up clearly or not. Let's zoom in. Uh, and, yeah, I think you could, yeah, you could see it. It's sort of connecting on the left side, then also a little bit on the right side protrudes out, but... Um, a nice gradable coin, uh, not in gradable condition, I don't think, where the grading fees would really be worth it in terms of the added value, but another nice coin. And we got a bunch of older coins, this one, 1861 uh, PF, so maybe it's not from Mexico, but it, it has a, well, it says Mexico on the back, two reals, uh, so a nice silver coin. These ones look like they could be a little bit older, and I'm going to take them out here of their case one of them's got a mini hole in it but uh these are so old so historic let's see hispan at end r let's see where is this carolus uh charles or i always mess it up yeah i think it's charles the fourth 1790 wow that is quite a piece of history again not sure what the mint is maybe mae is that lima uh, in, in modern day peru uh then we've got this one uh, one real, it looks like. Uh, this one's going to be, let's see, 1752, I want to say. Really, really old coin from, hmm, let's see if this, maybe Ferdinand the Sixth or something? I don't know. Uh, for there, but yeah, I think it's one real, especially given the size. And then here, uh, it's got a hole in it. Hispan, let's see, what is that? Carolus the fourth, I don't know, maybe 1798 or so, but a really, really nice group of coins, uh, super, super old, and they have that historic factor, which is so fun to have uh, all these coins. So I think that we've done really well at it. I think a lot is riding on how valuable that cob is, but I feel like it looked pretty expensive uh, based off of some of the you know older coins I've seen from that era. Uh, next, maybe I'll take a pause and open, cut this thing open. And we are ready to go, I think, or maybe not. Let's see. Here we go. Uh, there, and I've got it open, I think. So we can pull this here. Out comes the sets as well. Though a little bit is sticky here. Okay, looks like we got it. So we've got, first up, I'm going to zoom out a little bit. Uh, 2008 U.S. Mint Proof Set. Uh, so this one, let's see. Uh, Martin Van Buren, Andrew Jackson, James Monroe, John Quincy Adams. We'll check for any errors. Does not look like it. Um, so that'll be, you know, a nice like $7, $8 set or so. Uh, and the proof sets always are fluctuating in value. This is really nice. I love these coins. The East India Company uh, had a lot of involvement in India and the Madras presidency here, these were a 10 and 20 cash coins that were shipwrecked. And these things sell for like 35, 40 bucks on eBay. So, uh, you know, I, I bet I'd factor this in what for like 35 bucks or so. Um, really nice little historical insert there to go along with it. We've got a Cazador shipwreck coin uh, back with Carolus, I think three, 1783, when you can see the date, I think that that's more valuable, and it has the official pedigree of being an authentic treasure silver coin from the wreckage of the El Cazador. Uh, so that's really nice. Um, I have a little bit of a, you can pause it if you'd like. And then over here, wow, this says, so, Seated Liberty, Peru. 
Uh, one soul from 1923 to 1935. And let's see, 1934 looks like the date here. Probably an XF condition or so. Uh, so that's really nice. Only 50% silver, though. is surprising. I would have thought that it would be a little bit higher. But uh, and then looks like on the bottom, I don't think that this looks like has much relation at all to Peru. 10 francs from 1970 from France. Nice silver coin there. Liberté, égalité, fraternité. Uh, I think that looks like it's a little higher than 90% silver, but only time will tell on the official review. But, you know, a strong... I would be shocked if this batch wasn't worth like 50 bucks together at least. Uh, and then let's see. So I'm going to open this PCGS box up and... How should we do this? I think I'm going to start... Eh, I kind of want to open this thing up. Uh, let's see. Ooh, okay. So, got some... I wasn't sure if it was packaged like that, but it looks like, uh, you know, it's not. we're not going to have to open it up. I'll make sure that there's nothing inside uh, after this. But we start with a SEGS graded Prisoner of War 1994 W. I haven't seen this commemorative. Let's see. It is, yeah, Prisoner of War Museum. Um, so, a... Nice, presumably 90% silver dollar, modern commemorative coin uh, from the U.S. government. Mm, but that one, I don't know what the value would be. It could be a rarer modern commemorative, or maybe not. Then we have a EDGC 1945 Mint State 64 Washington Quarter. A little bit of chatter on the all through the obverse, really. Uh, then looking on the back, nice coin, nothing crazy. Um, but probably what, like a $25 find probably was in like a bulk submission batch or something. Uh, but not bad. And then this one, 1885. Oh, we had a similar one in the other grab bag and it had also this really nice little bit of a rainbow. You can see the blue here, but I was more focused on the yellow and orangish toning. Uh, 1885. Oh, we'll see what the back looks like. Does not have much of that toning exhibited on the front, but it's a pretty clean coin. A little bit of stuff on the holder there, uh, but you can see a few marks in the face. Nice, nice coin though. I think with the toning, easily going to clear a hundred bucks on those coins. And now we have this group. We'll see what we start off with. Whoa! So, also had one of these last time, and Spencer said he sells these regularly for like sixty-five bucks. This is an especially nice coin. It's going to be Mint State sixty-seven. The last one was sixty-five, so that makes sense in terms of. You know, this selling for a little bit more. You know, this is really nice, pretty toning, really just super obvious. And it's not like questionable color, which is huge. So, you know, this is a gorgeous Silver Eagle. Really like this one uh, and a fun one for somebody to add to their collection. Really neat. Maybe I'll contact him and try to buy one of these myself. They're nice. Uh, after that, we've got, looks like a regular oh 66 double diabris you can always see on the chin uh should be pretty apparent that there is that doubling right there uh that like right on the edge of kennedy's chin uh nice nice find um and it goes all along the underside as well of his his jaw um or like you know on the cheek but anyways let's see what the grade is uh sp67 so i don't know i think that these are actually worth a decent bit of money a little a liquid with having a variety but these are well known um i want to say maybe like 50 to 60 bucks but could be a little bit higher or maybe lower i'm not totally sure here's an eisenhower dollar nice uncirculated coin there could be some premium for really uncirculated ones this has a little something going on over there uh mint state 64 uh that is not going to be a hugely valuable coin maybe a break even one if you get a nice bulk rate and you're submitting in bulk but uh, I don't think these are super expensive, but they're nice. I mean, you know, clad, clad Ike could be a fun thing to put in a collection. Here we've got, I don't know, back looks cameo, deep cameo, front looks deep cameo, proof 68, deep cameo, 40% silver proof, half dollar from 1969. That's a cool find here. Um, you know, that's definitely a massive amount of frosty contrast through the coin. Here we've got another deep cameo looking Back of a half dollar, same thing. I would say that's probably deep cameo on the front. And 1970s, so a nice little compliment. Uh, two sets of Proof 68 deep cameo, uh, a, a mini year set. Let's see, is that another one? I can't tell if that one's deep. It doesn't look quite as deep cameo-y. Front does not. 
Oh, okay, okay. So this one, really, really cool. Uh, accented hair, proof 66 FS401. Check it out. Um, you could see some of the marking. I believe that uh, the, they were negatively received, I want to say, by Mrs. Kennedy, and she wanted less hair detail or something. So uh, as compared to a 1964 regular proof, there's just way more uh, sort of aggressive hair kind of brush marks through his head. So that's what we've got on that one. Um, let's see. After that, maybe another. That could be cameo, deep cameo for sure. Proof 68. All right, so that makes it a three a little three set, a lot of uh, Kennedy halves in this lot. And then lastly, we're gonna get a Susan B. Anthony. We'll just see, maybe it's a wide rim. Looks like it is. FS301, Midstate 64. So I think that that's everything in this lot. I'm gonna have to check the little thing that, you know, this thing, uh, I'll just do it off camera here really quickly. And yeah, there's nothing in there. Uh, this is a nice lot of coins though. I mean, a nice group of graded stuff here. And then a bunch of just collectible coinage, um, you know, for a thousand bucks, you know, somebody's going to get a really, really nice variety of things. I haven't done the math if it's like a fair deal, but I feel like, I don't know, my snap judgment says that for a thousand bucks, this is not a ripoff for sure. I mean, if you compare it to anything else that's like marketed out there, no way. But I think that, you know, it, it does extend beyond the thousand threshold. But interested to see how my internal valuation counter will go off. But if, you know, I think I don't like I'm not the best at pricing some of this stuff, but I feel like right here, that's got to be minimum like three or four hundred bucks. And I'm not sure how the accented hair or this double die obverse is going to turn out uh, or even like some of these proof values, you know, the kookaburra, a lot of these coins, um, you know, really interesting stuff. So enjoyed unboxing the grab bag. We'll see what happens in some of my future videos. And if I unbox another grab bag, you'll definitely see it in the form of a video. Thanks for watching the video. I'd encourage you to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel to stay updated. I've also got Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, so you can follow me there. Um, TreasureTownYT.com is the main channel website. Definitely give that a visit. I've got a lot of information about me up there and the channel, uh, coingrabbag.com as well currently redirects there, but it's some good opportunities for very fair grab bags, both made by me and other sellers, a lot of different options. So that's a good way to support. Um, there's also treasuretowncoins.com in the future. My coin dealing uh, operation will be done out of that website, uh, coinmeltprice.com for updates on the melt prices of your coins, both US and world a lot of resources in that website and then coinsmetalscards.com being developed right now as a marketplace and news source for coins metals cards and collectibles in general so i'll see you on my future videos looking forward to seeing you there and hope you have a good day